can see here, the houses, the schools, the farms, uh, the businesses, uh, everything comes from the coffee. What they do here is amazing, like the hard work that goes into everything. We've met so many of the farmers and they've been out there with like machetes, cutting things and pruning things and on like 70 degree slopes in the pouring rain out there like every day. If, if you want to understand coffee production, in a, you have to uh, manage each, each piece of land depending on the conditions it has. On the first year, we started working with farmers, 27 farmers, and we tried to focus on understanding the way they manage their coffee plantations. For example, which uh, inputs or which fertilizers they were using, which herbicides. We knew that we had to work with uh, more uh, technical analysis or from the soil, things like that, but with Airwatch uh, program, now every year we have this kind of uh, an, uh, analysis. We are working with farmers close, very, very close. So they, they have been taking record or tracking, keep tracking of the, all the management that uh, they have been doing here in this farm and also the cost, so how many inputs they have been applying, which products, so we can compare the management, even with the quality. It takes a 10 centimeter sample, and we take it, we take the sample like 10 inches from the trunk of the coffee plant on the uphill side. We measure the height of the trees, the number of orthotropic axes, which are the axes that have not been cut yet, Then we measure the ones that have been pruned, or the count the ones that have been pruned. We measure the height of the tree, count the number of leaves and berries, and uh, flowers and buds. Nati takes the, the time to invite the farmer to join us. So we're working with the volunteers, the, the farmer is with us, and while we're doing our work, there's a conversation between both. Probably on the third day we were here, I got to speak with Jorge, who is a coffee farmer, and um, he explained to me in depth the process of planting um, the coffee and, and, and just what it's like to cultivate the coffee. And he just explained to me the whole process with this amazing pride. I mean, this was his, his livelihood and his life. And uh, he and everyone in that community, that's, that's their life, that's their world. And, and, and making that personal connection um, will probably change how I drink coffee forever. I never see people from other country come to my farm. So that's nice. I, I feel proud. And at the end of the day, they say, uh, Felix, Thank you for letting me work on your farm, which is nothing for me to, to let them work there. There was never a sense like this was a Starbucks trip, and this trip was about Starbucks. It, it, it did not have that feel at all. It was, it was about the farmers. It was about the coffee. But um, being able to be here to represent Starbucks um, just in a personal way and, and then just hearing the, the, the locals talk about Starbucks, um, I think really changed people's perception. Farmers don't have control over the price coffee is sold in the world market. That's, that's out of their hands. But they do have a little bit of control on the amount of, co of money they invest on their farms. And uh, nowadays with the increase of, in prices of fertilizers, if you can reduce the number of bags of fertilizers uh, from from, I don't know, nine bags per, per, let's say, per hectare, if you can decrease it to seven bags, that means $200 less uh, per, per harvest. And it also means less energy spent producing these fertilizers and less pollution going into rivers. There's a musa and a brevia oh, sure. behind it. Volunteers uh, come here and, and they and uh, they see the research and they understand that maybe all this data that we're collecting can help these farmers do things better. Uh, it, that makes them feel proud. When they go to a supermarket, they can see not, not just a, a coffee, a, a package of coffee, but also they, they, they look 
farmers, they look natural resources, so they can see like not, not just coffee. It's it's really been something, like just very. It's the most well-rounded thing I've ever done, I think. Some problems can still be solved locally and can still be solved by the communities, but then there are uh, wider or bigger problems that it's time that we face them as a humanity and we understand that, that uh, we have to make joint efforts. I felt like I made a contribution to, to something very real and very significant, and, and that's what Starbucks um, that's part of our culture. Partners want to make a difference in their communities and in their environment. Um, it's actually one of the points of our, it's one of the guiding principles of our mission statement. And uh, so just a very practical way to do that and to um, come back and share. I'm excited to do that.